All right. Jason Whitlock, right? We're still on a Tyree Nichols. Oh, before we go on to Jason Whitlock, guys, please go to jjb2023.com and sign up to the website. Support Judge Joe Brown, run up for Mayor of Memphis. Very important. And donate. If it's easy for you to donate Cash App, it's dollar sign Judge Joe Brown 2023, or you could donate straight from the website. Um, and please share this Twitter space. So Jason Whitlock had some comments about the whole Tyree Nichols situation, and he came up with his conclusion as to why those officers did what they did, and he's blaming it on single mothers, baby mamas. Um, let me just, I'm going to play this clip, so you guys should be able to hear it. One second, I'll put it close to my mic. Uh, here we go. One's uh, behaving inappropriately, including these five Memphis police officers. This is a, it's an open and shut case. The, the, the camera from above captures the police uh, doing something totally illegal. The second degree murder charges are warranted. This is going to be a revisitation of the Walter Scott, the, the guy that got shot on camera by a cop in the back. Got with the, he got convicted, went to prison. It's an open and shut case. This is too. I don't get what people are protesting about. Uh, these are five black officers. The victim is black. The police chief is black. The police have been fired and charged, and they will be convicted, I would assume, by a predominantly black jury in a city that's 65% black. So the system is going to work here. What the other system that's working is the corporate media's uh, insistence on promoting racial division at the behest, in my view, of the military industrial complex. They want us all looking at this and not looking at what they're doing in Ukraine as they drag America and the world into World War III. This is a distraction, in my opinion. CNN hyped this video like they were hyping the Super Bowl. And there's really only 60 seconds of relevant content. You show the police misconduct from overhead as they brutalize this man and make it clear this is an open and shut case and the guys are going to be convicted and we move on. They treated this like a Super Bowl, enraging people, promoting the violence. And this is the most important story in the history of the planet. It's not. What's going on in Ukraine and our military involvement in Ukraine that's the most important story going on in the world, but yes, they don't right. want you focused on that. That is such a good point. And you would, I mean, you've been in the news business all your life, you know, 35 years or something. I felt guilty putting that video on the screen, not because I was on anyone's side. I felt, I felt obviously bad about it. It was horrible. But because you don't want to put ugly things on TV and inflame passions. You want people to be reasonable and think things through and reach wise decisions. Why would news organizations, I mean, they really want to make people enraged clearly they don't want us focused on reality hey if they want us to devote an hour of coverage to this and weekend coverage of this and they want to take us to a good place i would examine the racial element of this because there is a racial element and this is a story about young black men and their inability to treat each other in a humane way everybody involved in this on the street level was either 24 to 32 years old Everybody. It was a group of young black men, five on one. It looked like gang violence to me. It, it looked like what young black men do when they're supervised by a single black woman. And that's what they got going on in the Memphis Police Department. They've elected some, uh, put some black woman in charge of the police force. And we're getting the same kind of chaos and disunity and violence that we see in a lot of these cities that are run by single mothers. They're, if we want to discuss the breakdown of family that leads to disrespect for authority that causes you to resist the police and run from the police and not comply with the police because you resist authority at all times because there was no male authority in your home. Let's have that discussion. But that's not where they want to take us. They want to take us down the path of saying, you know what, this is Tucker Carlson's fault. This is some random white, this is Donald Trump's fault. It's not. It's the breakdown of family and the buying in to all these left-wing things that have nothing to do with promoting family. You've been on the show so many times, and every single time you say something I never would have thought of, including what you just said, and I appreciate it. Jason Whitlock. All right, so that was that. 
um, Sierra had, and let me know if you guys were able to hear it. I'm assuming you were. And Sierra um, did reply to him, I, I believe we're at Twitter, and she was like, as a black man to get on national TV and say something like this is irresponsible. A lot of amazing kids have come from single mothers. For you to also undermine single black women in the midst of this tragedy is so sad. This woman just lost her son. Do better. Um, so he's trending and he's doing a show tonight on his YouTube and he's going to address it. So he's going to get all that traction that he wanted. But it's two things he said here. He said that, okay, there is a racial element. Um, and I want to ask you, Judge, about do you think it's a racial element? And I want to ask you, do you think single Black mothers are to blame? And by the way, we don't know. Wait, 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 wait. One thing here. What is she talking about? A single black mother lost her son. The father is involved in the family of the deceased. So what is she talking about? And by the way, what he said. No, she was saying two different things. She wasn't I, calling his yeah, mother. I, I got it. Some woman's grieving, but she, her husband is with her. So No, she wasn't talking about the mother being. She was talking well, about then, single black mothers, period. Okay, and then well, she was saying... Why bring why throw in that angle when it is a real mother grieving for her son? So oh, well, the real mother has a husband that is grieving for this particular son. Now, let me say this. I've been attending meetings and I just attended one in a mall. I thought I was actually going to be calling from there and uh, I'm not expressing my opinion on it right now, but a number of women that were assembled were saying exactly that same thing. Okay, so but this is the question before you cut me off. How okay. do you, it's not even a question. Why is this man singling, first of all, black women? Because why? Because those officers were black? So have you singled out the white mothers yeah. of the white officers that committed a crime? Let me finish. Also, number two, he doesn't know if those officers were raised by a single mother. So why are you jumping to that conclusion, a horrible theory, you don't even know if they came from a two-parent household or not. Let's just say they did. So what is your excuse? So I have a problem with that. That's some ignorant, cool shit. Well, hold look on. Like it's putting no, out there. Because he's criticizing the media. Let me just say this one thing. Let me just say this last thing. He's criticizing the media, but he's turning around doing the same okay. thing that he accusing the media of doing. Okay, hold Go on, ahead. hold on. Here is a factoid. 84% of the young males black in the age ranges you're talking about by the U.S. Census Bureau are the product of single parent female heads of household. 84%. So if you've got a behavioral thing that seems to be generic, you start looking for connections and causality. Now, maybe he's telling the truth. Maybe he's not. Maybe he's an error. Maybe he's not. So if you've got more than eight out of every 10 young male blacks in the age ranges combined did not have daddy in the household. What does that say as to the likelihood of causality? Because it's pretty obvious something is going wrong of late and nobody wants to go look at causality anymore. They have all of these theories. And quite frankly, some of the theories are not solutions. They're parts of the problem. Now, he just proposes it. But she's upset. But what is the basis for her particular upset? No, no, no. That just, I'm just, I'm just. That was one of the replies because he did reply back to Sierra. Sierra has, Sierra has nothing to do with this. My point is, this man is saying one of the reasons why the behaviors are one of the reasons why the cops displayed that behavior is because they were raised by single black mothers. Well, first of all, number one, he does not know if they came from a single parent household. These five officers, I'm not talking about the general population. You don't know if they came from a single or two parent household, but you jump to that conclusion. And 
he and I'm pretty sure he heard of the rumor mill going around that people are now talking about that the motive to why he was that, that Tyree Nichols was attacked is because he allegedly was sleeping with one of the officers' wives. So again, if you are going to attack black women, then you should have that same energy for white women. Or not at all. Because yeah. this is, is this is has nothing to do with single motherhood. Well, let's put it this way. Maybe it doesn't have anything to do with single motherhood, but it has a lot to do with the absence of black father. If you want it put a nicer way, let's this, put it that way. Okay, that I understand what you're saying uh, in a listen, general prospect, no, hold on, but I'm talking hold on, about hold on, this hold on, case. Hold on, hold on. I'm talking about and these five officers. Hold on. In this case, if you listen to the language, the style, and the way of comporting self, and what you can hear the officers say, on the video, it sounds like the street. If you talk to uh, any young person, male these days, they sound certain ways, but let's just say this, let's just say it's the lack of fatherhood in the hood, and they do not sound like what I heard growing up. They don't sound like my father. They don't sound like my grandfathers. They don't sound like my uncles. They don't sound like any of their friends. They don't sound like my friends. They don't sound like the older edition of my friends' children, sons. But they sound like what's been coming along more and more frequently lately, which is somewhere in here, this situation where we find our communities are bereft of manhood and fatherhood, we tend to have certain really, really bad behaviors, principally centered around a concept that uh, nothing happens to me for what I do. I'm just tapped on the wrist. And whether that person is a cop or an ordinary civilian, in that age group, there seems to be a singular lack of understanding of what what's John Wick said. Consequence. Consequences. All right, I want to I want to I want to go to Rev Tim, and then I'm gonna swing back to Elizabeth Brandy, and then bring up Joe and Just. Well, thank you all very very much. I definitely appreciate the space. Hello to you, Dana. Hello to the judge. I'm a Hello. straight out of Memphis, Tennessee. Matter of fact, Shelby County, Millington. Uh, my cousin there in Memphis uh, runs the uh, te uh, Rise for Tears organization that. Um, Josh, can you mute up whatever you're doing? That um, runs around helping people. But I, I want to bring in, uh, like I said, Jason Whitlock, and for us all to understand that Jason Whitlock knows where he can make a lot of money. Um, Candace Owens pretty much uh, made this very, very popular. Um, Larry Elders tried it. Larry didn't do very well. Now we've got uh, some of these uh, Black people who feel that they can go on uh, Tucker um, Race Carlson's show and show out in front of white people one of the things that the right wing love to do is to make sure that they say that trope over and over and over again. I'm here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. Candace Owens came here to a room to about 600 white people. Uh, I was in the room. I guarantee you I was one of probably seven black people in this room of uh, I, I would say say. Uh, a, a lot of people was there and she said that over and over and over again and that gives white people the opportunity and the right to talk about black men and black women and that's the trope that they keep using that's the trope that you will hear them keep saying Larry Elders use it every chance that he get now uh, I forgot the, the, the young um, kid uh, the new the new kid on the block that he's a sports um, sports guy. Um, they went after him this weekend. 
Uh, he's the new one on the block. I call him Jason Witten 2.0, but people like Jason Witten, we, we've got to stay on top of people like Jason. When Jason talk, we have to be in front of him, behind him, and tell white people that he's wrong in what he's saying and don't repeat what he's saying or you're going to get your ass kicked. That's what we got to do because when Tucker put Jason on his show to throw this garbage out there, a lot of white people feel now, oh, well, Jason said it, so I can repeat it. No, you can't. Because, see, you, you, you're dealing with the new uh, black American. And we shouldn't be putting up with this stuff anymore. We shouldn't have, we shouldn't have, we shouldn't have let Candace Owens get as popular as she did. But we did, and we sat back, and we didn't do anything about her when she was putting down black people, when she was calling black people names, when she was talking about people who who looked like her, but she didn't care because the white man was paying her a pretty good penny. Jason Woodlock is going after that penny, and he'll do whatever it takes to make sure that the green in his pocket come from the white hands. And I land my plane. Thank you. Um, May I ask you a question? What if he's what if he's correct? About this I'm, situation? I'm, I'm not, I'm, yeah. No, no. What if what what, oh, oh. what if he is okay? Ju- wait, no, wait. no. Let me let me let, I'm sorry, let me say this here real quick. Is he correct when he's talking about uh, black men leaving? There, there. I'm dealing with three black girls under the age of eighteen right now. I'm the mentor of them, mentor for them. Yes, I, I will give it to him when he talks about that. Sure, Judge. He is correct, but do he need to go on a show like Tucker Carlson? Hey, why don't he go out here and tell us who he's he's donating to? What 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 well, what what places he's donating to that's okay. going to help these kids? What has he done? Uh, Where have he stepped out? Is he a mentor to okay. some young question. man who's coming out of prison? What he don't say that. Question, yes, sir. Question, yes, sir. Question: huh? If he is in fact telling the truth, you are saying. It's his venue that is objectionable, not his message. Is that what you're saying? And if that's the case, then I would ask you. But his message isn't for us, Judge. His message is for the white man. No, 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 no. How do you think? Well, okay. I haven't been to church in a long time because I just won't go. Because I haven't heard a preacher say preach about sin in years. They talk about belief, but not sin. Um, if somebody needs to talk about sin, how do they get the message to the people who near to hear it? In other words, what black media is not also listened to by whites these days? social or mainstream if there is such a thing as black mainstream media yes How there is, is such a thing we are the there? new black media judge i know but I, we don't have <laughs> that kind of distribution and well, no, I know. we're in the listenership so i mean how is somebody supposed to get the word out just curious and i'll add something about this too uh, I got elected to two eight-year terms as a criminal court judge, and during one ten-year section of that, they did a statewide study on recidivism rate. At the beginning of the rate, uh, study period, the recidivism rate was eighty percent. At the end of it, it was still eighty percent, except one place in the whole state, and that was my courtroom, where it dropped down to eighteen percent. And the secret to drop. 62 points plus off of the rate was to implement manhood training with everybody I put on bond, let out of jail, put on probation. Now, why do you think there was such a lot? Okay. Some, I wish people would stop calling him when he's on Twitter. You went out. Okay. Unmute judge. I'm you. Those were people not connected with this. That's uh, some forensic people that I had looking into an issue that might be of concern. All right. So anyway, I'll get them later. You muted yourself again. 
I did, so I wouldn't interfere. Oh, I'm but sorry. I'm okay, listening. let me go to Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Well, can, 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 can I say just one other thing oh. real, real, real quick on that? Uh, when Judge uh -huh. said, how do we get our message out? We get our message out by not going on white TV, throwing the black man under the bus and then under a four-wheel drive, four-wheeler. That's how we get our message out. We get our message out by going to the areas where the problem is. That's how we get our message out. I would have done something totally different from what he did. I wouldn't have never went on Tucker Carlson's show. I would have never said the things that he said. It would have been easier for him to go to where the problem is and to deal with the problem straight up than going on Tucker Carlson's show to throw us under the bus to give the white man another stick to hit us with. That's the point that I was making. If he's going to do it, then, oh. come, then, then, then come to Minneapolis, Minnesota, come to my church, sit down and talk to those people, tell those people what, where, where we're wrong. If, if he want to throw the sin part in there, I'm fine with that too. But to go on these shows like this, especially Tucker Carlson, of all people to go on his show, of all people to go on his show, I would have rather for him to go on Hannity. Old people listen to Hannity, but the young people listen to Tucker Carlson and they can run around with this crap and then and, and, and throw us under the bus with this thing. So I land my plane there, Judge. I thank you very much. I appreciate you. Mm. I hope you win. I, I guarantee you my family will be voting for you. Dana, great space. Appreciate y'all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, I'm going to go to, okay, so Elizabeth Brandy. Then Joe, then Just, then Shut You, then the greatest lawyer, and then I'm gonna bring up Victoria and it look like that says president. All right, um, Elizabeth. Yeah, thanks. Um, thanks, Dana. Uh, Judge, I've I've been in the space before when you talked about the same kind of well, not the same as the way that 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 Jason Whitlock put it because oh my goodness, um, but talking about um, raising kids and ha having basically a, that that moms go too easy on their kids. Um, and I kind of felt the same kind of like tone. I don't want to say tone because I really don't want to equate what he said to anything that you've ever said, obviously. But um, I think that that narrative can be damaging to the to the psyche in general. I, I, I'm kind of like nervous all of a sudden. So I'm I, sorry. You always do that, Liz. I know. I'm working. <laughs> Okay, but my point is, is again, like, what could we do? And to, to the point of him going on Tucker Carlson, like, it is clickbait. Tucker Carlson is clickbait. He does it for the ad revenue. He gets the numbers up. Um, I really cannot think of a more destructive program for a nation than like Tucker Carlson and Shapiro. But that's a totally different space or a totally different time. Um, I like to see action items, I guess. And I, I would ask, like, if if you or it you know, in the position of mayor, again, how, what would you do to help remedy this so that it's not um, used as an excuse? Also, it's just terrible. You said that, moms. Okay. Okay. I did this when I was a criminal court judge. I went out in the streets. I interfaced with the people that I interacted with in my courtroom. And I was grandfather. I was uncle. I was dad. I was village chieftain. And face to face, up close and personal, I had people listen to what I had to say to them. And it worked. It worked real well. And if you walk around Memphis with me right now, you will find people coming up. Judge, you remember me? No, I don't, sir. Uh, well, you gave me some time. Did I give you enough? Well, yeah, but it was this thing about manhood. It straightened me up for the last 28 years. I haven't done anything wrong trying to do nothing but right. I got married and my grandchildren are blah, 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 blah. Okay, fine. Great for you. And I'm trying to teach what you taught me to a bunch of boys in the neighborhood where I live. Okay, great. But you see, somewhere along the line, the piper was going to have to be paid with everybody gets a participation trophy. Nobody's feelings get hurt. Nobody's self-esteem gets damaged. Nobody is supposed to be shamed. Nobody is supposed to be feeling guilt. And you got rid of the coach, the strict male principal, uh, 
male teacher, the drill sergeant. Now they go around and pass out cards, stress cards, rather than the troops getting jumped like they used to 40, 50 years ago. So it's a new day, but is it a new human? And does the new way work with the traditional, the same old or basic raw human when it's a male? That's a question. And you see, nobody wants to talk about that. Oh, this ain't the time to talk about that. And that's why I have a problem with him. But Brandy, I want to go to Brandy, then Joe, then Josh, then Shut, then the greatest Victorian and president. Brandy. Okay. So I. Uh... I'm not very much of a political person, so I'm not even really sure who Tucker Carlson is. Like, I mean, I've heard the name, but I don't watch the show. But anyway, um, so listening to this guy speak, I very much do agree with him. And nobody really wants to talk about that because you will get attacked. Um, like in some of my mom groups and everything, um, like, for instance, they posted a picture of Kiki Palmer and her maternity Um photos and everybody's like oh my god I'm so happy for her one girl mentioned okay well where are the wedding pictures and the girl literally got attacked for that and it's almost like uh uh what the judge said nobody wants to really deal with what comes with that conversation um my husband he's been in the navy for like 24 years going on 25 and he's talked about how things change and how he can always tell when one of his guys didn't have a dad in the home. Now he, we just, this is just our private intimate talks, but he was like, I can tell you these guys have no male figures in their life. You can tell when it's time for them to take instruction or to do a job and nobody likes to work. And you know, he, he talks like that. Now we all know not all single mothers are bad. We know that some good have come from single moms. We all know this. But I think what the bigger issue is, is how do we stop this um, praising of the single motherhood? Like um, at some point, I feel like, you know, instead of striving, I know I'm a woman. I know what it's like to have a desire for a baby. But at the same time, you wouldn't want like, you know, father in the home. Why, like, I, I think about Tom Brady's wife. Yeah, she divorced him, and I don't blame her because I'm pretty sure she has boys. They're probably getting to a point where they need their dad at home, you know, and it's just getting mm-hmm. difficult for her. So she's like, you need to be home with these boys. Um, he, you know. I, I, well, just real quick, let me just say something, Brandy, real quick, and then I'm going to go to Joe. Uh, mute up is a little feedback. Though. Oh, sorry. Um, as far as, um, what's the damn actress name again? You just said Brandy. Kiki Palmer. Yes, Kiki Palmer. All right. As far as Kiki Palmer, she's um, a multimillionaire. She's worth millions. Um, her, Rihanna, people like that, um, I wouldn't marry unless my mate has way more than me. And that's just for purposes of when we get a divorce, you want to try and take half because men are doing that now. And you're not taking nothing that I earn. So I think that was more logistics as far as business and why she's not pushing marriage. And celebrities shouldn't be looked to as role models. But, you know, um, her and Rihanna is a different case because they're worth multi-millions and their partner is not worth more than them. And they want to keep their money to themselves. And I'm not about to pay no man no um, alimony, palimony, or child support. Let me um, go to Joe. But you did make some very valid comments, Brandy. Um, Joe. Uh, hi, everybody. It's my first time on uh, a Spaces, and um, I think your name is Dana, the host, so I just want to thank you for putting this together, and uh, I've been following the judge for a while. Thank you for being here. Thank you, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm deeply into my 40s now, so getting older, and, you know, you start seeing the world a little bit different, and um, also, you know, um, after you're around and you see a bit, um, you know, you get a little less emotional about things and you want to, you want your solutions and you want your solutions now. And, um, you know, when I was listening to Whitlock talk on Tucker, um, and I actually watched Tucker Carlson, I watch CNN and MSNBC too, but, um, over the past couple of years, I've been 
wondering more and more about the solutions. Like, why is our society falling apart the way that it is? And when I turned to CNN, they said something that didn't line up with reality. And sometimes Tucker Carlson did. And I'm only saying that to say that I'm more, I care more about the solutions. I care more about somebody giving me facts I can work with than whose mouth it comes out of. Now, people like Jason and Candace, um, you know, a part of what they do for a, li a living is sensationalism, right? But it doesn't mean that they are not uniquely suited to understand the black community and understand how we are viewed by the larger world and provide vital insight that can be taken away. Now, when I, you know, I'm the child of a black mom, I have two black sisters, I have a black son, and it's kind of like, you know, when I look out in the world today, I work in the IT industry and I'm watching people come in from all over the world and step in and take jobs and become successful. And I'm noticing that there's just less and less for black men to do in this world. And it's really becoming quite critical right now. In a very short period of time, if you don't have some kind of skill that's usable in the society, you're going to be disposable, right? And so it's becoming very critical. So when I hear Jason get up there and the way that he phrased it, might not have been right when he said there's black, it's black women that are having these kids out of wedlock. He's also leaving out like what the judge said, it's absent fatherhood too. But, you know, at a certain point, it doesn't matter. It's the equation that's off, you know? It's that black men, and I'm, I'm gonna put this out there because I grew up in Brooklyn and I ran with a lot of young kids and I didn't go away the way a lot of them did. But I remember, um, you know, young black men are emotional and testosterone driven and they need to be checked. And it just comes a certain point in a young black man's life that his mother can't do it. And if he, and if he isn't set right there, he might stay on the wrong tracks for the rest of his life. And so it's not so much of, it's a, no one wants to say to black women, you know, that desire that you had to bring life into this world. You know, that wonderful thing is is turning out to be this terrible thing that society has to deal with. But at some point, we have to start talking about that because it's just not working. Right. Um, thank you, Joe. Um, I'm going to go to just and it's a it's, it's a good portion of people that are waiting to speak and I'm going to get to everybody. So thank you guys for um, being up here. Um, and like I said, please support Judge Joe Brown, cash app, dollar sign, Judge Joe Brown 2023, and go to his website, jjb2023.com. And let me just say this, because the another problem that I have with his comments is basically he summed it up by saying Black women is the cause of Tyree Nichols' death. That's what he was alluding to, or, or just like um, Tyree Nichols. And he did not mention, because yes, that is a problem when we have single parent household in the Black community. But I'm tired of the narrative where you want to sit up here and kick the backs in of Black women and your Black ass never mentions the father. Because it takes two to tangle. It takes two to make a kid, two to raise a kid. So yes, she got pregnant and she wasn't married, but that does not mean that the father should not be in that kid's life to be present and raise that child. Well, I also would say that if in a situation where a man is there to get laid and a woman is going to be the one ultimately ending up holding the bag, we need to be more like we need to be talking about that as a society. If you yes. know that someone is going to be able to walk away. Well, we, we, have don't, to be we, we don't know. Better. But this is the thing. We don't know if he's going to walk away or not. See, you, you can, we can't read minds. There are certain situations. But that ability one, one to second, evaluate, one, that ability no, 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 to no, no, evaluate one second, one second. used to be handed down from black woman to black woman. So this situation didn't end yeah, up like this no. over and over. And it's right, not right. anymore. Right. And I need you to meet up because I, I need to bring in just to move this along. But just for me to counter, it's not handed down from black woman to black woman. That's a, a, a portion of it. You look at the whole holistic 
circle of the 360 degrees and it's a whole bunch of other factors and again if you are only going to focus on the women i have a problem with that because you gotta focus on the man you have to focus on the man nobody didn't tell you to label the woman and not put a condom on nobody didn't tell you to label the woman and not pull out nobody didn't tell you to label the woman and nut at her knowing that she was going to get pregnant and for you to not be there and raise your child so again, if you want to sit up here and kick the backs in a black woman, because I love doing that shit, then you better kick your other foot and hit that damn man over his motherfucking head. So let me go to Just. But good, some, good points, Joe. Appreciate you. Just. Okay, thank you. Oh, sorry. Not me. Just. J-U-S. Do I see Just? Just did Just leave. All right. Um, I don't see Just anymore. Shut you. Yo, yo, what's what's up, Judge? What's up, Dana? Uh, so you, uh, is that the only issue that you you got with what Jason said on the show um, with Tucker? Now, listen, I I know his platform that he that he's been trying to build since he left off of ESPN, and it's been uh, even when he joined. Uh, uh, outkick uh the coverage with uh shoot i forget that white guy's name and they fell out when he was able to interview trump and, and everybody else and then they had their issues this is a platform that he's been trying to build around uh morality around uh bringing back uh, values to the household and different things like that so when he said that on the interview i i took it from a different angle than probably where a lot of people might take it because i i i, I know what he's been trying to do and he's been trying to build it up i think some of that was to uh stir up a conversation like he stirred up right here right now in this moment and uh which will keep his name in the air. Uh, you know, Tucker and, and even him, they are master propagandist type people that are able to push that in a way that can keep it going like this. But I don't think he was, was trying to take the man part of it out. I just think that's the way it, it was delivered and that's where it came across in a short Two minute conversation. What what you think on that, Judge? I mean, because you know, I know I know Reverend Tim, and we talk quite a bit. He just don't appreciate him doing it on that platform. Uh, with a white guy like Tucker. Um, let me just say this: Jason Whitlock has been a journalist for over twenty years. He is very highly respected in his field, and rightfully so. Candace Owens is not a journalist. Jason Whitlock is a certified journalist, and he does his job very well. And he always makes, a, a lot of his comments and his commentary is very well researched and thought out. So I'm not discrediting, you know, what he does for a living or the person, because I don't know him, but his comments were um, not related to what happened and disingenuous and you know and 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 honestly he could have easily just said black families black men and women but he always focused on the women so he had enough time to include the man he just didn't it's easy to focus on a woman no matter what her race is or her background that's just how society is but if you are not if, if men have a problem with a woman saying well, men need to take accountability. Well, then why don't you address that? Why don't you address the problem of having that problem? Because you have to take accountability. So do that woman. But the narrative is always on the woman. It had nothing to do with Tyree Nichols being murdered by those cops. He did not know if those cops were even raised by single mothers. Do you think his attack was more slanted at the chief in in a in a in a, in a certain kind of way? Is, is, Maybe is, it she, was, but is she married? If, if if that was the case, she's married. She okay, if, married. she's married. But if that was the case, he should have. He again, he is a professional. 
He knows what he's saying and he knows what he's not saying. I want to move on to the greatest lawyer. Wait, oh, I I I'm, in Memphis, I'm in Memphis with Judge now. Let's just talk for a minute. Yeah, now may I add just No, we're not going to just talk for a minute. Dana, are you getting wait, a little sensitive? One second, Judge. Are we getting a little sensitive? No. Wait, I'm going to let you know for a second. You know, we talk about wait, 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 wait. all the time. Don't women we do. do a little wrong every now and then? That might no, 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 no. I'm not, I'm not saying that. Comment? And first of all, just as a lot of people in queue, so we're not going to have a long, drawn out conversation with each person. I want you to come up and say what you have to say. And then I need to move on to the next person. And then I'll open up the floor for just whatever dialogue. Um, don't play with me today, Judge, because it's not about me being sensitive. We we <laughs> we do the show, and this see, listen, we didn't we didn't argue no. not one time since we had Turn this around. like we usually do. I'm not arguing with you. I'm we no, you know how we do our back and forth on the man up show. We do talk about men, but I'm talking about overall on social media. You have all this hate for women, particularly black women. There's all that's this not me. No, no, not I'll you. I'm not talking about you. you. I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about other content creators or journalists or platforms, and specifically Black women. And I'm like, what the hell does single parents have to do with this particular case for you to get on Fox News with Tucker Carlton, where millions of people are going to watch close to a billion with the reruns, and single out Black women and basically say they stop? What are you doing? And basically say they were the cause of this man dying because they were not married. So I want to go to the greatest lawyer. Thank you. I completely agree with what you just said. I thought it was garbage for him to come up there and just cast aspersions on women as a whole. Um, what I believe is that those kinds of conversations should be solutions oriented. For example, we need to get to the root of the issue of black manhood. It's related to the justice system. I don't know about the courts all over the country, but I have my data here. And it shows that a lot of black men are incarcerated compared to the general population. And I want to share another number here. Um, life without parole, black men, 48%. Arrest rate for black men versus white men, 6,000 and about 200, as opposed to just under 2,000. That's what I have here. And I just wanted to share that, that when people go out there and start talking so negatively about black women, instead of fake focusing on the problem. If you're saying that there's a problem, the men, the men who do not have parents, the men who need their fathers, the justice system is patent, is inequitable. The sentences that are meted out to, to black men are disproportionately high. Again, I'm talking about what I have based on data, metadata, for the Southwest, for the Northeast, and for the Central, um, and for, I think, South, no, for the Southwest, Southeast, and Northwest. So um, I, I'm, I'm saying this just to make it very, very clear that the problem, I mean, when we have this, and I'm just, I'm going to land in a minute. So when we have these discussions, when people go out and talk about all the problems that have been created in the black community, could they please end with addressing the causes and providing solutions that could address the problem? We don't want to hear it anymore. People are getting killed on a constant basis. These, the, the discussion is going to arise again in another month. People are going to, it's going to continue unless we're willing to be authentic and to talk about what the fundamental problems are. We need to address, for example, what I just addressed, which is just one of the problems. We need to address the justice system. We need to have an overhaul. We need to tell people, stop addressing just women. Address the issue of lack of the, you know, where the males are. Where are the Black men in society? And I'm just going to end this by saying to the sisters out there, please marry white men. Just marry whoever. Don't wait for these black men. It's gonna go on. No, no, man. Where, Come where, on, Dana. Where stop her. Dana. Dana, get her. Stop her. Can you they're stop? Gonna, they're gonna stop. Drag you stop me, Dana. Stop her. 
Okay, first people. All, I, first, I'm yeah. not trying to mute up everybody, but if, if I I'm give somebody the floor, that's their time to talk. And okay. So, so you cut me out, Dana. To my sisters, I am interracially married. Find you a good man. It does not matter how much melanin he has because these guys will go out there and drag us. So find a man that loves you, get him, have your children, and have a good life. If they're not willing to address the problem, don't let them go out and talk across on the show and drag you. Just do your thing. So that's all I have to say. So thank you. And the great employer landed. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, Can I what? give it a brief response to that? Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I've been doing what I do professionally for more than 50 years. All right. And there is a direct one, one correlation in my mind. And I have a doctorate degree. It came out at the top of my various and sundry classes. Uh, last one formally was UCLA law. And I've done pretty well in what I've done and had an extensive career. And I would say, as a general thing, the number one contributor to the seemingly insoluble problems that we have as a society here in the United States can be directly attributed to the efforts to emasculate that society. You have the apex predator on the planet Earth, represented by young human males, and you get away from the appropriate socialization and acculturation that has brought them over the last quarter of a million years from cave to condo, and you don't expect to have problems, of course you're going to. So who's at fault for this? Is it all the man's fault? Is it all the black man's fault? Is there something else going on? Is there complicity? When we get to talking about where black men or anybody chooses to deliver a message, what about that same mainstream message popularizing the use of the N-word, glorifying this function? So instead of the young man who is trying to be about something constructive, we generate a deification for the pimp, drug dealer, thug, murderer, gangster, hoodlum, criminal, and ne'er-do-well, who basically isn't worth much according to general society unless he can entertain, in other words. All right. Um, what are we talking about here, and who's at fault, and where has it come, and what has happened over the last 50 years where we should have two generations, but we actually have six or seven in some instances breeding quickly, starting at 10, 11 years old. And where are the men who are involved in this process? And has it gotten to a point where there are at least three, maybe four significant generations of men in the space that there ought to be two, two and a half, who don't have a clue as to what to do so they can make choices that might be conscientious and effective. All right, so, so what do we have? All right, so um, one second, because I'm going to go Victoria President Leon Lisa, and then I'm going to swing back. I see you, Sir Major, and then Brandy, and then I'm going to bring up some people that are requesting. And let me just say this, you know, it's, it's mighty funny when somebody sit up here and say, hey, if we got a shortage of Black men, go outside your race. And I see how some of you Black men get sensitive with that remark. It's funny. All right, um, Victoria. Hi. Hey, uh, thank you. First of all, thank you so much for holding this space. Um, <clears throat> thank you for waiting. Thank everybody. Oh, you guys for waiting. Ab yeah. oh, absolutely. I made sure that I made myself a little drink and I uh, took notes. Um, so first and foremost, the first thing that I want to say is this. I love how easy black women are always the lowest hanging fruit. Anytime that there's a situation that comes up, Anytime there's a anytime there's a tragedy within the black community, as opposed to us coming together and galvanizing each other to find a way to make a change, to actually put our boots on the ground when it comes to politics, when it comes to getting our voices heard in a judicial system within our community. No, what we choose to do instead is to denigrate black women. And we never see that when it comes to little Tommy and Carter and Cody who go and shoot up a school or shoot up a church. We're never asking about where's their mother? Oh, where's a white mother? Where's the white father? What about the white fathers within these white houses? 50 million shootings that we have that are perpetuated by white men in this, in this country. 
violence that is perpetuated by white men in this country. We never throw white women underneath the bus. We never throw white men underneath the bus. No, what happens is it's easy for us to throw, to point the finger at black women because not only have we historically never been protected, our femininity has never been respected and our bodies have never been protected. How dare we sit here and point the finger at a young man who's on his, uh, the mother of a young man who's on his way to her house because he knew he was going to get a home and well. And she's mourning and she's grieving. And instead of us coming around and supporting, we're going to sit here and point the finger at her? Like there's something wrong with her? Like she rounded up five of her black females and stomped him out? How dare we? How dare Jason Whitlock? sit his black ass up on that show like a damn Uncle Tom. How dare he shuck and jive for Tucker Carlson? And it, you want to talk about solutions? You want to talk about what's wrong within the communities? What has Jason Whitlock done? Where is he donating his money? Where is he showing up and doing after-school programs? Where is he actually reaching, uh, reaching into the different communities around this country and actually working with local um, uh, civil rights, either working with the civil rights, working with um, uh, local smaller uh, city councils. You know, I myself, I am one black woman who has a full-time job, okay? I was raised by a single mother. Thank God for the fact that I grew up in a predominantly, um, it was a very, very affluent community in the Northern Bay Area, right outside of Napa. But for the grace of God, I go that my mother was in a position to make certain choices as a single parent. She made those choices that allowed for me to be better, to do more, to have what I have. But never once would I ever look at my black brothers and sisters and look down my nose and say, what did you do wrong? I'm never going to look at my sister and say, what did you do wrong? I'm never going to sit in a space and denigrate any black woman who happens to be a single mother and say, what? Let, let me let me thumb my nose at you. What I would actually do if I was in a position of, of power, of influence, of, of wealth, what I would do instead would be like, how can I show up? What are the ways, what are ways that I can, um, that I can breathe life and pour into my community? I love my black men and I love like, my black sisters, but I, and, and I want to find a way to be a part of a solution, not a part of a problem. And anytime that you have a Van Jones, a Candace Owens or a Jason Whitlock, the only time you ever see them paraded out onto stage is when there's been a national tragedy that's happened. And instead of us actually looking at what the causality of it is, we're now shifting the narrative. And that's exactly what's happening right here. Now, what we should be talking about is the, his, um, the, the, the disgusting tendrils of slavery, like the leftover, the, the a leftover results of Jim Crow of over-policing of the black community, of the crack epidemic, all that stuff that has denigrated the black, um, the black families and how black women have always had to shoulder the families, whether it was white families when we had to be their wet nurses in their, uh, in their homes or when it was uh, our bodies became, um, when we stopped being the property of one white man, we became the property of all white men because they could rape and, and, and damage us physically and there was no recourse. But we, su we survived that. We held our head up high. We have uh, Black women tend to graduate from college at a, at a higher rate, but yet and still something's wrong with us because we decided to choose higher education. You see Black women and also Black men sitting in um, in, in higher uh, uh, in, in the court systems and whatnot. Like when you see them in the in the, how, in the uh, uh, what is it? The, I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm kind of talking over myself right now, but both in the, uh, in, in the House and the Senate, you see a representation, but we have to do it on a micro level. We can't just sit here and be like, oh, well, let's shift the narrative. What about the mothers? How about this? What about putting people into place? What about encouraging people to vote? What about encouraging people to get involved in their local communities? What about um, uh, working with the people that you live next door to and taking care? And if you, if you see somebody who needs, um, needs help actually helping them as opposed to telling them what they're always doing wrong. Um, I, I, I'm totally jumping all over what my notes are, but uh, one of the things that I did here, I think, uh, Judge Mathis, you'd said is you were asking if the, um, no, 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 no. Judge Mathis, no. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Judge, Judge Joe Brown. Brown. But but yeah. you you asked if 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 the um, the woman who's over the head of everything is married. Who gives a shit he if she's married not, or not? not? He could be. No, it, no, it, it, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. Let me. 
one second, one second. Doing, get your facts she right. Didn't, I he said didn't, he didn't. she is married. Now, I didn't raise that, so stop attributing it to me. Right, and he didn't say that. Now, I okay, yes. okay. I, no, I, 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 will, I will, I will, I, I have no problem conceding if I'm wrong. Because there's a bunch of people talking. I've been sitting here for a while waiting to come out. If I got it wrong, I sincerely apologize to whomever it was who asked about her marital status. It doesn't matter. The bottom line is that is her role. That is her job. She, this is, she is an example of what you're, what the heck you're supposed to do when you have misconduct amongst the people that are underneath you. Whether she's married or not, it shouldn't really matter. At the end of the day, she did her job right. And as a matter of fact, other other precincts should take a uh, take a page from her book and actually follow through with what she did in this instance. Is she 100 percent perfect? Probably not. We're probably going to find out all sorts of things. Enough, the Scorpion crew would have been the right thing to do. I agree. I agree. And, and just like I just crew. and and just like I immediately maybe just said 15 seconds ago, okay, we are probably stop, going to stop, find stop, out stop. that she's wrong. Hold on. No, 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 no. Uh, I'm just finishing this thought. I'm not. I'm not negating anything that you're saying, but what I'm I am not, I'm saying is is that. that's not what I'm talking about. Let me give you what I'm reading right now on the net. Sure. Okay. Now, what the chief? This is from Atlanta's main newspaper. Do you know what the chief got fired for? Yeah, huh? I live in Atlanta. Yes. Well, you should be aware that she got fired for facilitating a child porn ring conducted by the husband of one of her friend girls. And that That's is horrific. Yeah, that is horrific. I and right, and I will now, say, and this thing, is, this is, thing, go ahead. Next thing, next thing. I had a case in front of me. Everybody got upset about it. And women were particularly upset. It involved a cop. And he was supposed to have done something wrong, except by the time the press got through with it and it actually went to trial, what the motive was, was not wrongful doing. But the man was upset because the victim had been repeatedly screwing his wife and he caught her, caught him and told him never to do it again. He did it anyway. And his wife threw it in his face. He lost it. Now, I hear a lot on here. Let's supposing that something something's wrong with this case about why they hit the ground at 60 miles an hour with no work up to it. Uh what if somebody was screwing somebody's wife or somebody had been selling drugs to somebody's children or a brother or sister? Would that make any difference and take it out of the realm of uh, police misconduct, which it still would be, but would it make it more along the lines of frontier justice? Now, we black men are always getting dumped on. If you listen to some of my brothers, they say, we get no respect from anybody, including our black women. Look at what's her name, Stacey Abrams down in Georgia, how badly she talks about black men all the time. No, she doesn't. No, oh, she doesn't. She do. Oh, no, she does man. not. I live down I, here. I, I, I have I, I have sat in on spaces I, and forums I, with Stacey I, Abrams. No, me. she does not. This is a matter of opinion. I've heard her. And yes, you can have your opinion, but yes, you cannot make a black and white excuse statement me. without actually excuse knowing the facts. Excuse me. I have heard her on more than one occasion. And as a black man, I was highly insulted by what I heard. Now, and as a black woman, I've been highly insulted excuse by a me. number of the things okay, that I've heard. Excuse me. Now, remember, we have equality these days, right? If it's okay for a black man to be insulted, then a priori, it's okay for a black woman to be insulted. But the sad so thing is, sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. But why? But, but why? Why, why are you assuming? Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let me just rebuttal. Why are you assuming that I'm saying that it's okay for anybody to feel bad? Well, Why am I saying that? I, I never once, I never once since I've since I've started to speak, I've never once said that the 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 onus should be on one group or another. What I said when I first came into this space is, why are we not supporting each other? Why are we not lifting each other up? Why are we not well, in each other's corner and having each other's back? I, I like well, who. Okay, and, and then the other thing that I'm going to say because I know somebody else has to come up and speak and and and. and you know, you absolutely are entitled to your opinion. But while I'm here and while I have these next couple of seconds, I want to say this. We are once again shifting the narrative away from what the original point is, which is how our police departments are being policed and how they're being managed. No, and in the thing, and no, 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 let me just let me just finish this. Let me just finish what I'm let me let me just finish this thought and statement. 
You but, mentioned um, the, the the chief that was fired here at, here in Atlanta and then went over to, mm-hmm. and now she's, she's policing over there. That is well, a perfect she, example she, how, uh, hold on, hold on. That is a perfect example of how mishandled policing is done in the United States. There should never, she should not be able to leave one state and get a job someplace else if she grossly mishandled justice in another city. Nobody should. Um, the cop who, caught, who shot and killed uh, Tamir Rice, he got another job in another district. The, the, um, um, the, the fact that you have different people who, uh, what's his name, the one who, who shot and killed Mike Brown, you have different people who, who have these gross mishand- mishandling of, of justice that causes, that winds up costing the life of black and brown bodies and even white bodies in this country. And they're able to just wipe their hands and go someplace else. I understand that right now, I guess we want to talk about like how, oh, what's wrong within the black family or the black community. But I would think that we should be focusing in on why is our judicial system? Why is our police departments allowed to be run like we're in the wild, wild west? And with that, I will mute. They aren't. They aren't. And I'll answer that. They are not. Well, the next time there's another black body and we find that cop working in another city, then I will I will be I will absolutely look forward to your response at that point. And now I actually really am shutting up. 60 percent of the judges, criminal court judges in Memphis are female. 60 percent. Once again, you're bringing it black to male and female. I don't understand why. I I didn't know that this space was just if if your if your focus is just Uh, on men versus women. Excuse me. No, no. Doing. It's sounding like it is listen, because I listen. Just stop a second. Now, sixty percent of the judges are black, and sixty percent of the judges, which is a separate statistic, are female. The majority of the voting, excuse me, the jury pool, about sixty-eight percent are black. We've got a black female chief of police, a black male sheriff, a black male who is. Well, so everybody's mayor. black. I get it, Judge. What's and, the point yeah, with that? So the point is, how are you saying it's a miscarriage of justice if it's black folk doing it unless there's because something else wrong with the. Equation? I don't you because I. That. Well, you uh, well, if you would listen, what I actually said was it is a mishandling of the way that we are policing, whether it's white. Black, whatever, Hispanic, I don't give a shit. The bottom line is, is the way that we're doing it in the United States, it's wrong. It's wrong. I agree with Victoria. I agree with Victoria. I, I feel, I feel, I feel like, and I really, I'm gonna. I really am. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And 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 you, you can say whatever you want at the, on the heels of this. But and I will say this, and I promise, I'm actually gonna take myself out of speakers. Question. What should we do to improve? What should we do to improve? Because you see, we should be all, talking about that. We should look, be talking look, about you, that instead of look, black look, women and, and, and look, black let men. Me, let me let me give you a perspective. I'm asking you a question, and, and I'm giving you an answer. No, wait a minute. Okay, okay. I really am going to mute now. I, I will listen to your question. No, no, listen carefully. You are getting a question from a person who may soon actually have the authority to do something about the problem. So I'm asking you to give me who may make the decision or implement a policy or make a change what should be done. Now, this is your turn. Okay. 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 And, and, and my, my, done. My response to that is we need to start, you, if you get elected, need to really, truly go in and find a, it, it's, <laughs> I don't have the magical, this is the box that it falls into answer. I can tell you what the end result is and, and what the end result should be is getting dirty cops out of First of all, getting dirty cops up out of there, number one. Number two, if somebody has a history of either, whether it be domestic violence within their own household, I think that that should be looked at. And I think that they should be underneath a microscope. I think that psychiatric counseling for all police, whether they have issues or not, is very, very important because that actually speaks to how you interact with the people that you're supposed to protect. I think that um, if somebody has has had a domestic, uh, excuse me, had, had, has had a moment where they had to discharge a firearm, 
and um, they were found guilty or it, or it became a, um, a larger issue. I don't think that if somebody is fired in one district that they should be able to go into another. Now, these are all end result ideas. I do not work in the judicial field. What I do know is I have a history. I went to college. I learned my shit when it comes to, and I paid attention, in political science and government um, and civics class. I know that to a certain extent, you have to elect certain people that are going to support um, and I guess it sounds like in, in uh, certain me, let me, areas. Let me sum it. Let me try to sum it up. It needs to be overall police, actual real police. Uh, thank police. you, thank yes. you. I can't. I can't get down to the micro. I can give you the macro. I can't give you the micro. And that's and, 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 and 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 I really am. And once again, I am going to say I am going to shut up. But with for you and I, Judge Judge Brown, I think both you and I are very very spirited and we're very passionate. And I feel like instead of taking the passion. And that spirit and that that desire to because we ultimately want the, the same end goal. I think instead of like kind of betting heads, this is a moment for us to actually stop and listen. And I know that I'm very, very passionate. I know that I'm very, very fired up. Um, but I am also but I'm also a woman enough to step, take a step back and listen. But I also want to make sure that I'm heard. And I also want to make sure that my other black sisters are protected as well. Um, Thank, and thank and with that, I mute. Thank you. Uh, 